Hey, 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 y'all. Welcome back to Mirror Expressions, a channel where I take the time to share a little bit of myself with you all. And I invite y'all to come on in and do the same with me. All right, y'all. I need y'all to go ahead, hit that subscribe button. If you have not, please go ahead and do so. Also, hit thumbs up on this video so it can get on out there and get more people seeing what y'all are seeing and partaking in what y'all partaking in. You know what I'm saying? Tis the season. Let's share. Let's share. <laughs> All right, y'all. Also, drop me a mirror emoji down in the chat if you have looked at the mirror today and you feel A1 with what you see looking back at you, baby. Because... <laughs> You got to be about self, you know what I'm saying? And if you are not, then do what you must, okay? To get back to a healthier version of you. All right, y'all. Look here now. We doing this love with our borders, baby. <laughs> I can see this going to be so messed already. <laughs> already. Already. And we are just on episode three. You don't have to do that. Ooh, By the end of this review, you gonna know why they named it. You don't have to do that. <laughs> All right, so I'm kind of guessing this is probably, you know, how every episode is gonna open up. We're just kind of just getting a little snippet of what everybody's doing. Of course, you know, don't know for sure because it's just episode three, but I think that's kind of how it's gonna be. They kind of laying a foundation for that. So we start off how we ended last time with Dan and Brian. Uh, we see him. It's like seven something in the morning. He out working in the on the in the um on his farm already. Dana still in the bed sleeping. Uh, <laughs> but she like, uh, you shall not, you shall not disturb my peace. <laughs> she is so unbothered right now. Baby is sleeping peacefully. Then, you know, we see uh feel he in the bathroom taking a poop and so i guess karma was wondering where he was or she was looking for him so she knocked on the door she was like hey you taking a shower he was like no nah, I'm, I'm doing the other is where you know what i'm saying so they had like a little cute banter then we see gerlene and shreya they finally get some alone time at the house so the, the other family members they are out in the back somewhere i don't know and so we see them uh celebrating their time alone by taking shot, 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 shot. Okay. Um and then over with Aaron and uh Mayel, Mayel, Ma, I don't know. We're gonna say Mayel. I think that's how Aaron pronounced it. I know I feel like <laughs> Mayel pronounced it a little differently on the first episode. So I don't know, but it's okay. Yeah, I know who I'm talking about. <laughs> but anyway. I ain't even talking about he got to use the bathroom, y'all. When he opened that door to go in the bathroom, I was like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> hey, what is that? Like, the bathroom on the airplane was bigger than that. Like, oh, my goodness. I said, can you even turn around in there? <laughs> I don't think I can do it. I don't think I can do it, y'all. Like, his whole place is teeny tiny. Like, I feel like it can fit in this room right here. Like, oh, child. Then the sink is not even in the bathroom, y'all. You got to come out, touch the doors and all this before you even get to a place to wash your hands. Like, oh, well, mm -mm. So, my L said, you know, he's feeling a little overwhelmed. We get it to know someone from scratch because, you know, with that comes a lot of questions and so, I just kind of think, like, they both seem awkward to me. Like, awkward, not, like, weird awkward, but awkward, like, together. Like, they don't seem to be meshing, you know. I know both of them kind of said that they are, um, you know, attracted to each other, like, physically. But there just doesn't seem to be any chemistry there. Like, what do y'all think? I'm not seeing it, at least not right now. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. Um, Mayel decides that he's going to uh cook them dinner. They're going to stay in. He's going to cook dinner. So, he's, like, going around, like, asking, like, well, what do you want? Do you like this? Do you like that? And uh, I think they settled on some quiche and... 
baby, uh, what's his name? Aaron was like, what, what is Keish? Like, Aaron, like, what? <laughs> yeah, I don't think Aaron is the sharpest. He's not the sharpest crayon in the box. Like, he's an optometrist. And, you know, I know you got to be pretty smart to go uh, to get there. I, but maybe, you know, it just was a familial thing. He kind of got passed all through. Or maybe he's one of them people that just got book smarts. Because, baby, it ain't clicking. I, and the only reason I kind of lean against that, because some of the stuff, it'd be like, if you had book sense, then some of these things you should know, like, that Paris is not the boot-shaped country. <laughs> like, I don't know, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, because then he go say something else later on, and I just really was like, <laughs> but anyway, my he was just kind of like you know, Abram didn't know his way around the kitchen. He didn't know how to cut up no vegetables or anything, and so I think my is kind of just thinking that. Aaron eats well. Aaron did say he eats out a lot, but um, so I think that's kind of like um, uh, I would say red flag. I don't think it's necessarily a red flag. I'm gonna say a yellow flag for my ear because he's like, he's just saying like he eat out a lot. Does he ever eat at home? Like, what you know what I'm saying? But anyway, um, they get to talking about the bed situation where they're gonna sleep, you know, uh. My uh, talking about his bed list out to two beds. Uh, <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> not in that teeny tiny room. It does not. That is one full size bed. Not even the whole queen size. This is. <laughs> I was like, how do you think that's two separate beds? Just because you got two different mattresses, but but they laying side by side. Hell, yeah, that's how they do when you go. That's how king side. They put them two beds together. Like, <laughs> like, no, oh, make it make sense, child. But anyway, we finally meet the fifth person, y'all. His name is Naeem. He's from, uh, what, Houston, I think it was, or that, what, let me see. Yeah, Houston. He's from Houston. He's 39 years old, social worker. You know, he basically said he doesn't fit in the dating scene there. He kind of, I think he, um... Says he's kind of like a big kid. Um, he uh, he said he was emotionally and spiritually immature until he uh, caught C-19. And I guess he was just very ill. And he just had this whole awakening with God during that, that time period. And he decided to change the way he was living. And God told him he need to go find his wife and yada, yada, yada. And so he's just telling us about like his parents. They were married about 40 years. I think he said his dad passed recently a few years ago. And on his deathbed, baby, the dad just had all his confessions. He, these are my confessions. Hey. <laughs> So dad let him be no that look, your mama was the only one and you got some more siblings out there. Basically. Basically, he had been cheating on his wife the whole time. And um and so then we also find out that they are of um of Muslim faith because he was saying something about um when his father passed, like one of their rituals or traditions is that they have to wash the body the naked body so he was saying him and his brother was washing the body and when they got to uh that old pain that thing was huge they said well dang we know why he was out there slaying that thing around you know what i'm saying no wonder we got all these siblings we ain't know nothing about that was I was just like, look here now. Look here. <laughs> oh, goodness. But anyway, 
Eighty eight days left for Dana and Brian, and look, Dana like Elf trying to get up at this bed. <laughs> I don't know what they did. I think she to get her tail woe out. Do you hear me? Cause baby, nine thirty, she still sleeping. Baby Brian come in, he to cook breakfast. He to took breakfast up to it. He to came back downstairs. He to ate his own breakfast. Girl, she still sleeping, y'all. And then it went to about one thirty or something like that. That um, the lady finally decided to get up. You know, I was trying to get her the benefit of the doubt, like she been traveling and all that. Tired difference is just catching up with her, and they probably got it in, like I said, I think they did, and so did she blow out even more. But this saying is, is this is day two, it ain't day one, so <laughs> or maybe, maybe they counted, maybe okay, maybe I'm just saying now that I'm talking about it out loud, maybe they're counting day one, the day that she arrived, so then that really would have been her first night. And it's day two. So let's just go and get her the benefit of that. That she ain't just sleeping around like that to the middle of the day, okay? We just gonna get her the benefit. We gonna see on the upcoming episodes if, if this is a pattern. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, I just said he's a real romantic. You can tell he is. And because he, he brings her like a, a single rose. He didn't make her get out of bed. He brought her coffee in bed and... So I was like, oh, okay. Um, Aaron and Mayel, you know, it's 88 days for them left too. Uh, Aaron, he's just unpacking and I'm just like, where is he putting his stuff at? Where? Where? <laughs> I feel like everything he brought going to take up the whole entire house. <laughs> just leave it in the suitcase, Aaron. Just, ain't nowhere for you to put a boo. Ain't no... Leave it in the suitcase, okay? Just leave that your suitcase. All right. All right. <laughs> um they had like this weird conversation over boxers or briefs. And then it got to talking about uh how you can't wear swim trunks to the pools there because some about some hygienic hygiene, you know, so they make you wear like the little speedos, the little tight underwear. So I was like, oh, interesting fact. You know what I'm saying? Never knew that. Learn something new every day. All right. Over with Girlene and Shred, y'all. That Girlene, she's something else. But I told y'all, she she just seemed like she was finna be something else. I told y'all that she was. And uh, honey, we find out that she has spoke again about living with his parents. And um, she done convinced this man to, uh, for them to get their own place together. I said, okay, okay. I got a lot of questions surrounding there, surrounding that. I don't know, like, if I would have done that for the experiment part of it. But if we were going to continue to have a lasting relationship and I decided to stay and I decided to stay and live with you, then yes, like, definitely. So I just got questions like, who going to pay for this place? Are they signing an entire lease? Or does their lease system even work like like ours, you know what I'm saying? Because like most of ours are on a, a yearly lease, but then you might get some for like a six months. But then you might have some rentals like a month to month, you know what I'm saying? And like, you know, I just got questions. I got questions. But anyway, well, baby, oh, Shreya, I said the thing there. He's having some serious separation anxiety. Like, Shreya, you are too young. I mean, you are too old to be having this kind of separation anxiety. See, that's why you don't need to be living with your folks right now. You need to be a little bit more independent. But, uh, but because, y'all, yeah, he was out in the confessional. <sighs> like, no, mm-mm, no, Shreya, you too old. You too old. Get over it. <laughs> Cut them strings, sir. Cut that umbilical cord. You know what I'm saying? Oh, child, so... He finally tell his family that they're moving out or whatever. And so, uh, the dad going to tell him, well, you know, you got two ladies in your life, your mom and, and that, that chicken now. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, 
uh, no sir, baby, that's your lady. Like the mama is your lady. She is not his lady. See, that's that's part of the problem, right there. That is part of the problem. And so, uh, my mama wanted to know if this was her decision, cause surely her baby did not come up with this decision on his on his own. Baby, them the parents are not too happy about this. Uh. Uh, decision to move out. They are not, honey. I said they they start to look at her a little differently now, cause they like, uh, uh, this this woman coming in here, she changing things. She got my son moving out. Like, uh, uh, baby, they are not happy. So we see Phil and Carmen. They got eighty eight days left to um, she's cooks for them for for them. Some, you know, Ghanaian food. And so she's telling him, you know, about the different foods that she pre prepared and how they eat. So they eat with their hands. And she was like, even more specifically, you eat with your right hand. You don't do it with your left because your left hand is what you use to wipe yourself with. I said, oh, child. Baby, you know, I ain't gonna lie. Like, I really was thinking, like, they only ate certain foods with their hands. I didn't know it was all foods. So the way she kind of explained it was was like all their food that eat with their hands. So I was like, oh, I don't know about that. Like, I don't have to go give me a good fork, you know, <laughs> spoons. Uh, but anyway. Oh, child, what I got going on? So, uh, he ends up, uh, Telling her that, you know, he's been celibate. And, of course, she asked why. So, he, you know, he went on and told her, you know, whatever. whoop to boo yada, 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 yada. And so, she tells him that uh, she would go crazy with our sex. I said, baby, I feel like she loves sex from the uh, <laughs> first episode when she was talking about why she decided to do this show. And, and she said that... Uh, because everybody knows who she done been with when she is. I said, oh, baby, she's the one that loves the sex. Because when she said that, when she said everybody know who I been with, I was like, I didn't feel like she meant to like be within a relationship way. I feel like she meant be with, be with. I said, uh hmm. Ain't nothing wrong with them, though. Do you, boo? Do you? Just be safe. <laughs> so, Erica shows up while Naeem is out jogging. I was like, you know what? He had sit up here acting all surprised and stuff. And I'm just like, y'all, come on now. Because, like, some of this stuff, it's just like, why even act like it's natural and he's not playing those things? Like, lady, you did not just show up and just knew where he was jogging at. Just happened to walk up at the same time he was coming around that corner. He already was mic'd up. And like, come on now. This is just like... <laughs> some things is like, come on, come on, come on. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, back at the house, you know, uh, his mama, she not happy at all. She uh, uh told him, you know, that this experience that this is his experience so you know don't expect her to visit and baby this thing walked off of him <laughs> walked off closing door she's like i don't want no pause of this pretty much i said so he you know he upset or whatever and so you know we see him like standing like in the middle of his closet or whatever and then erica is deeper in his closet than he is i'm like why is this girl all in this man closet like that? Like I said, she is not finna make she finna make sure he get on that plane. Like, uh <laughs> you get on that plane. Here, let me go and help you pick. Like, those were the vibes she was giving out. Cause I, I swear I saw her turn around and start picking clothes off his ankles. <laughs> Like Erica is not playing with him. Like, no, you can't let your mama stop you. You, you got to do what's best for you. Just remember this: this is your journey. Yada yada yada. I said, oh child, Erica want that money back. She like, uh, uh, mm -mm, you getting on that plane. So anyway, um, 
interesting fact that I just learned also. Uh, so over in Ireland, you know, in the car, the blink is to uh, signal you turning left or right. They're not called blinks. They're called an indicator. Another fun fact. I kind of like this show for the little fun facts we're learning about the cultures wherever they're going. So I, I, I can appreciate that, at least this part, that part of the show. But anyway, yeah, fun facts. So Brian is showing Dana his other farmland and basically like what he does. And then it's right out there picking up some poop, some animal poop. I think it was like a sheep or something. He said, with his bare hands, then he had to turn around, be all on his eyes like that. I said, ugh, ugh, no. <laughs> Dana talking about she can see herself fitting in. She want to plant flowers. I'm like, this is a farm. <laughs> to plant flowers and host dinner parties. I'm like, Dana, this is a farm. <laughs> Again, this is a farm, girl. You're not fairly, you know, socially lifestyle on no farm. Boo. <laughs> Baby, these folks are a mess, honey. So, Mayel and Aaron, they're out about the city. And so, Mayel takes Aaron <clears throat> Uh, to like the Eiffel Tower, but they kind of, they didn't go straight up to it. They kind of stopped on like one of those bridges where they do the, like the love locks, right? And they take their first picture together with the Eiffel Tower in the background. And uh, so when they was going, <laughs> this is one of them other moments, y'all. I just have to be like, Aaron, <laughs> like, just don't talk. Keep you. Be pretty, sit pretty, keep your mouth closed and sit pretty, baby. <laughs> so I think Bael had asked him, we asked, how how tall does he think the Eiffel Tower is? And then they ain't gonna talk about some 15 buffaloes. <laughs> the the height of 15 buffaloes stacked on top of each other. I said <laughs> Now Aaron. <laughs> Oh, wait, baby. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Anyway, y'all. Anyway, <laughs> this thing I thought Paris was the, the boot country. Okay, but anyway, anyway. <laughs> um, my girl ends up pulling out this lock, y'all. And he just says, you know, he wants to do the love lock thing. You know, basically, there are different places all over the country. And, you know, you get a lock, you put whatever you want to put on it. Usually they at least do their initials and maybe a heart, a date or something. You lock it onto the bridge and you toss the key away. So that's basically what a love lock bridge is if you never experienced one. And so he pulls out a lock and uh, he said he wants them to do one. And Abram's just like... <laughs> <laughs> he was hesitant before. He was like, okay, yeah, let's do it. And he was just like, hey, Mayel was just like, you know, it's just to signify our, I'm sorry, y'all, I'm moving this camera, to signify our commitment to the, you know, to the process, to the experiment or whatever. And I'm thinking like, mm, I'm, I'm with Aaron on this, but you know, Aaron was like, this, you know, he said, yeah, but he in in his confession, he was just like, you know, this is a little too much too soon. And I'm just like, yeah, I'm with you. Like, nice gesture, gesture. It would be nice if, you know, they were in a different place. But shoot, this is the second freaking day. Like, y'all still even acting awkward. Y'all not even vibing right now. You know what I'm saying? And if you want to do like a love line, you know, not to say that this is something... Like a marriage or, you know, but still, it's just, it, it's just too much, baby. Too much. Um. Anyway, Carmen has taken Phil to her favorite hotel so they can hang out, poolside or whatever. And so they chilling by the pool, having drinks, chit-chatting it up. 
and uh, Karma check him out. He checking her out. They both come in on how they like what they see. Like the sexual attention is there, and you can tell you. I can feel that through my TV. Like y'all just gone do do at this point because both of y'all want in. She's very forward. You know what I'm saying? Um, which I was like, you go, girl, honey. So, um, you know, basically she says she wants things to happen, but she doesn't want to be the, be the one to make the first move or whatever. And so, um, uh, over with Shreya, Shreya, you know, and Gerlene, he's taking her to meet some more of his family, his friends, to show her, you know, like, what he does, how he hangs out. And he said, you know, they they party pretty hard there down in the Dubai. He wants to know if she can keep up. I said, well, okay, you know, what kind of party you talking about? <laughs> so they headed to the barbecue or whatever. And uh, <clears throat> they, you know, she come in, she started meeting the people or whatever, and they started taking shots off top. But they are literally wearing their shot glasses around their necks. That's all we saw for like the next five minutes with them. They kept throwing them shots back. I said, oh, yeah, y'all party, okay? <laughs> and, um, and I said, baby, the alcohol got girly talking. She is talking up a storm. And so she's talking to um like one of his family members. I think it was her his cousin's husband or something. And baby, she was talking to him like I ain't never seen her talking. I ain't know she could talk that much, baby. Um she talks about how they were living with his family and she doesn't like it. And Shreya was over there looking not too happy about that conversation because she's talking to this other guy now about that. Why Shreya just sitting there on the outskirts like as if he ain't there and they having this whole conversation about him. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, baby was talking. Baby was talking. Oh, and I ain't never seen her talk that much. I ain't know she could. And it's funny that she talking this much to somebody she don't know versus her husband. Because we ain't seen her say that much to him either. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, she looks relaxed and glad she's laughing. Like, so she looks like she's enjoying herself or whatever. whatever. So anyway, we just get a little snippet at night going to the airport, finding out where he's going. He's going to Panama. And that is pretty much all we see from him this episode. So, can't wait to see who his mate going to be. Anyway, back to Gerlene and Shreya. Oh, they still out. And can I just insert y'all? Did y'all see how that house was lit? Baby, that thing was lit there. Like, <laughs> like Christmas on steroid lit. Like, I'm like, okay, you know. Um, anyway, I said, that girl laying this dog on gone, baby. She is gone. She gone. Shreya say he drunk as hell too. And so, um, <clears throat> so we get this thing. Okay, they they all out by the pool, just you know, drinking, talking. You know what I'm saying? And so, one of the people decide, hey, you know, let's move things inside. You know, I'm kind of getting bored being out here. So, Gerlene decides, you know, well, let me clean up my mess, you know. So, she starts, like, like mess, like, like the the plates and the, the glasses they were drinking out of and stuff. So, she starts cleaning this stuff up. And somebody ends up, you know, was just like, you know, um, hey, you ain't got to do that. Let the... Let the staff do that. The staff will come. Somebody going to take care of it. She was like, no, no, I got it, got it, got it, got it. So then, oh, uh, oh, what's her name? Shreya was just like, you know what? I'm sorry. Like, he wasn't saying like, I think he was just saying, I'm sorry that you feel like you got to do this or I don't know. Like, but he kept saying, I'm sorry. She was like, no, you ain't got to apologize. Like, she was just kind of. 
I feel like, you know, I get her wanting to clean up after herself because, like, that would have been my first instinct, too. Let me just clean up, you know, especially I'm in somebody else's place. I'm not going to leave no mess, you know what I'm saying? But even when he was just like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, like, she kind of snapped back at him. I, I, I wouldn't have did that, you know, that was just kind of weird or whatever. And then, um, so then, uh, so... You know, it just had kind of became a big deal, kind of snowball, because then one of his friends came over. And so she was just kind of trying to tell her, you know, we have staff to take care of that. And she ended up calling, you know, one of the staff members over to come and get the stuff from Gurley. So he came. He came, y'all. He was trying to take the plates and cups out of her hand. And she would not relinquish them. Now, see, at that point, Gurleen, you just trying to put up a power struggle because you should have just said, oh, okay, I didn't know. And went on again. You know what I'm saying? And turned it over to him. Turned it over to him. You know what I'm saying? And so, it, 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 like, like I said, I get wanting to clean up after yourself. But at that point, when they were like, they have someone to do it, girl, like, relish in that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It is not the time to get into a power struggle about cleaning up some dirty dishes. Relish in that. You know what I'm saying? If that ain't what you use for life, they be like, oh, okay. You clean up after me? Oh, oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? Girl, like, stop. Like, over some doggone dishes, like, I told y'all she was finna be a mess from the get-go. So, Shrell's like, you know, his whole thing was like, and I think he said this in the camera, like, uh, in his confessional, like, it's an insult to, like, the people of the house because it make them feel like the people they hire to do that is not doing their job or, like, they hire bad people. You know what I'm saying? Like, um... Like, they just didn't hire, like, and I hate the, how he said this, like, they didn't hire the good help. When he said the help, when he kept referring to them as the help, all I could think of was that book, The Help. Well, I read the book. I'm a book reader. And then the movie followed, The Help. If you just see it, you know what I'm talking about. But anyway, so then, you know, so she not only gathered her place, but I guess she said, I'm going to show them. So then she just starts cleaning up all the ish around the place. Gathering up this person plate, that person plate, this cup, that cup. I say, you know what? You know what? So then we see him and some of his friends having this little sidebar conversation about why she's doing this. And the friend got really offended. He's just like, you know, does she not know? Like, can we tell? You know, <laughs> friend was big mad he was big mad <laughs> um because he just didn't like how it was going down and like even at one point they kind of exchanged like words because he was like you know she's a beautiful woman but and he she was like i am beautiful you know <laughs> i'm like you know what well, girlie i don't know if it's the alcohol but part of me think that's just your personality because i peeped you last first first uh the first second episode that you was finna be a miss you was finna be a mess, baby. But anyway, so it just done turned into a whole big deal. But that was where the episode ended. So I guess we'll see next week, uh, you know, how they resolve that whole issue and where they went from there. But anyway, the upcoming, the uh, previews of the upcoming episode seem like it's going to be interesting. So I think I'll stick with reviewing this show and see where it takes us and and um, y'all come along for the ride. So if you haven't already checked it out, check it out. Love Without Borders. It comes on on Wednesday evenings. And then let's talk about it. All right, y'all. I'm going to be out. I love y'all. I'm praying for y'all. Y'all, please pray for me. Bye, y'all.